All right, raise your hand if you know that middle school students need help with writing effective summary paragraphs. We hear this over and over again, and I bet you are tired of your students writing things like, well, then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and blah, 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 and on and on. And so in today's video, I'm going to sweep you off your feet, no pun intended, with a fun and effective activity that will help your students tidy up their summaries. So we're gonna dive in and sweep away details that aren't needed in a short summary. But before we do, make sure that you hit subscribe where you're watching this video for more like this one. Okay, so after you model how to get rid of any essential details in a summary, which is exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video, at the end of this activity, you will review the SWBST. So somebody wanted, but so then summary method. And that way your students can put these new skills into action that we're gonna talk about. All right, so big picture, students are going to read a very short story and they're gonna list out all of the details, all of them, before they determine which details are the most important ones that should be included in a summary. So that's a big idea. So to prepare for this lesson, there's a little bit of prep involved in your part, but it's not that bad. So before you introduce the activity to your class, you'll need to make three different signs that are labeled essential, inessential, and unsure. Then you're gonna find a short story that you can print out for your students, making sure that it includes a ton of details. What you can do here is you can use our friend ChatGPT to write one of these for you. So you can give them the instructions, write a short story for fifth graders or whatever grade you teach and include lots of details. Just give that to ChatGPT, that's what you get. And then you can modify it as needed, right? But ideally you want it to be a pretty straightforward story since the focus of this lesson will be on summarizing and not necessarily on analyzing the story. So once you have your story printed out and copied, if you want to, you can borrow a broom for this lesson, which is exciting. So go get a broom if you want to. So once you have all of those things prepped, everything printed and your broom, you'll start off your lesson by standing in front of the class with a broom. And in fact, I should probably have a broom for this. And you can ask your students, you know, what do you use a broom for? And of course they're gonna say things like to clean or to pick up dirt or to sweep things away. Well, then you can ask your students, what do you think this broom could represent for today's lesson on writing summaries? And you can give students like a minute or two to come up with their answers. They can even do a quick think pair share. But ultimately, you want them to come to the conclusion that just like we sweep unnecessary items off of our floors to keep them clean and organized, we must also sweep away unnecessary information from stories in order to write tidy, organized summaries. So that's how you'll start your lesson. Then you'll pass out the short story that you're gonna use for this activity. You'll read it aloud as class, briefly discuss it. Again, we're not analyzing, we're talking about summarizing here. So then you're gonna ask students to raise their hands and tell you the details and information that they found in the story. And I want you to write down all of these details on separate sticky notes as students share them. So you can put them all on your board and write down all the details as they say them to you. So again, you wanna write down everything that they say, as long as it's accurate and it's not redundant. So it doesn't matter what they tell you. If you're like, that's not relevant, that's not the point right here. We're writing down all of the details and make sure that students don't miss anything important, but write down all of the small details too. Okay, then you're gonna take those three labels that you prepped earlier that said essential, inessential, and unsure, and place them on the floor spaced out in that particular order. So one by one, read aloud students' responses that you wrote on those post-it notes. And then I want you to have students vote where you should place that post-it note. Is it a detail that needs to go in the essential pile? Does it need to go in the inessential pile? Or are they unsure about it? So based on what students vote, place that sticky note under that corresponding label or next to that corresponding label. So something important that you will want to note when you share this with your students is exactly what you mean by essential and in essential piles. So in this particular case, for this particular lesson, essential means it's a detail that is so important, so important that it belongs in a short summary. In other words, the detail is critical to the plot. And inessential refers to a detail that is not important for understanding the main points of the story. And what you can do is it can be really helpful to have a discussion about how all of the story's details are essential for drawing readers in and keeping the reading interesting, but not all of them are essential to explaining what a story is actually about. Okay. 
So once you work your way through all of the post-it notes, go revisit that unsure pile where students maybe weren't really sure about those. And I want you to take a few minutes here to discuss those details and then move them into the essential or inessential pile. Now it's the fun part. Ask a student volunteer or randomly pick a student to come up and they're going to sweep the floor. So give them the room and have the students sweep the inessential sticky notes off the floor and into the recycle bin. And you can even play the first two verses of that song, Yakety Yak by the Coasters to create like a memorable moment in this experience. Um, so I won't sing the song for you, but the song goes, you know, something to the effect of like, just finished cleaning up your room. Let's see that dust fly with a broom, etc. So you can play that song, have your students sweep it away. And what's cool is this is one of those moments that students are gonna remember. They're gonna be like, Mrs. Mitchell had like a broom and a song today in class. It just makes it more fun and creates a moment for our kids. So now at this point, you only have that essential pile left. And this is all the information that can be used for a summary. Well, the next step with your students is to write in SWBST somebody wanted but so then so write that acronym on the board and review the details that students have listed in the essential pile and then you can work together to fill in the different parts of the framework using that information right who is somebody what do they want etc now after you do that group activity you can then decide you know do you want students to read another chat gpt created short story and then complete that swbst method as independent practice whatever you want to do but consistently having students use that SWBST method with any fictional text they read throughout the year really is an excellent way for them to internalize the concept of writing effective summaries. And this summarizing sweep activity is going to kick things off for sure in a way that is memorable for them. So we'd love to hear if you give this activity a try with your own students. Let us know in the comments where you're watching this video. And if you'd love to learn more about our EB writing program, you can add your name to our writing wait list so you can learn more about how we teach writing here at EB Academics. I'll include the link for that below where you're watching this video as well.